Hello, Zyda. Hello, everyone. Hello, hello, hello. Thanks for waiting. Sorry, we're getting started a few minutes late today. I got distracted a few minutes ago. Um, didn't get the uh, vocab quiz put in. I'll be honest with you. I was playing with... Uh, I'll be honest. I was playing with a new toy that I got in the mail yesterday from Amazon. I was able to acquire on huge discount a 3D printer. And I was messing with my 3D printer. So I apologize. I'm not being selfish. Let's let's put that behind us. Let's move forward. Um, I'm currently shrouded in shadow. Uh, I forgot to turn the lights on. I've just realized. Uh, there's tons of light over here so I can see in the room just fine. Um, but I realize that I look um, kind of like Harvey Two-Face. So... Um, which, you know, maybe uh, I'll just scream a lot about what's fair and I'll toss coins for things. That could be fun. That could be fun. Um, kind of like a cosplay. Yes, I paid uh, about $260 for uh, like a relatively high quality printer. That, to me, is absolutely astounding. Uh, and, you know, after class we can talk about how it worked, which is also astounding. It's literally using a laser to freeze liquid in a shape. And that's just freaking mind-blowing. But, alas, we don't have time for today. Because, everyone, it's amazing for me to say this. It's our last Wednesday together. My chair is sunk into the grooves and the carpet. Please move forward. Okay. It's our last Wednesday together. I, in this class. I know I'm seeing many of you again, but um, you still have two opportunities to take me, but possibly more. Um we did get our um, analytics minor submitted to governance this week. Um, actually, last week, technically. Um, all last weekend. So um, hopefully you'll start hearing about that. Um, like I said, maybe I'll find some time to talk about it. Um, but I don't think those will be courses will be offered this year. Um, so you'll have to take 379. Well, no, it's not a prerequisite. Just this is the pre prerequisite. So anyway, um, if you're interested in business analytics... Um, we're going to be starting to offer um, business analytics. Or technically, it's going to be called data analytics because it's not just for business. Um, we're going to offer data analytics minor courses starting in fall 2021, um, I believe is the plan. So um, there's going to be uh, management, oh, management 351 I'm going to teach uh, in the fall. And then management 352 um, will be offered in the springs. Uh, those are both going to be required courses for the minor um, on top of Management 379. That's going to be the other the third core course. Um, but you already have to take Management 379. The trouble is that a lot of students put it off until their last semester because it's hard. Um, it, it is. I'm not going to lie. It's hard. Um, it's a hard class. It's harder than this class for sure. Um, pretty much everyone agrees it's harder than this class. So, um, But saving the worst for last is generally not a good plan. I don't recommend it. Um, I'm teaching it in the fall. I've got an online section and a face-to-face -face section. If you want to get it out of the way, um, love to have you. Um, and then if you like it, then you can come back next year and start looking at the analytics electives for the minor. In addition to that, um, to answer your question, is it Anthony, it's so hard to remember based on just a username. Anthony, is that a, a Perino? Are you Anthony? Am I right? Tell me if I'm wrong. Or Antonio? No. Antonio is somebody else. So Anthony? Is that right? Don't leave me hanging. Don't leave me. Don't leave me hanging. Oh, no. Okay, I'm going to fill the time. Anthony. Okay. No, you're Anthony. We could have more than one Anthony, but you're Anthony. Okay, dang. I usually do well to get, like, first name or last name. I don't usually get both. We have like 100 students every semester. It's hard. I try. And I'm reasonably successful. Anyway, that's beside the point. Um, are we going back to person? I mean, yes. Yes, we are. Uh, there's a delay, Bart. It's about two seconds. Um, unless you have a bad internet connection. It's about a little over two seconds. 2.15 is what I got last time I checked. If you're curious, by the way, I'll show you how. Go to my account. Go to the stream, which hopefully I'm going to mute. Okay. Mute. Okay. Uh, and then you go to settings, advanced. 
Uh, and then you go to settings. It's not muted. Okay. Try that again. Settings, advanced, and then check video statistics. I'm, oh, it's slow for me today. 2.8 seconds. Wow. 2.9. Now, I'm not sure. Maybe I'm mistaken. Maybe there's a 3-second buffer and then a 2.74-second latency. So maybe it's 5 seconds. I'll see if I can tell based on like the, the loop, right? Let's see. That seems like 2 seconds. So you can see as the, wa as the wave waves. See what I did there? You can see it's moving down image to image. 2, 1 two, one, yeah, that's about two seconds. Okay, let's get that existential nightmare of the loop forever. Are we going back to in person? Well, yeah, of course, at some point. A minute or two? It shouldn't take a minute or two. It, it should take two seconds. Okay, well, that's unfortunately, yeah, I'm not going to spend forever trying to figure that out. Um, so, uh, you know, I had a question earlier. Uh, I try to go over this every time we have, we have class, um, but apparently, because I'm not, I mean, maybe I'm not saying it clearly, but your, these announcements that I go over every class, they're here. They're on D2L. Um, in fact, if you remember when we had the very beginning of class, I sent you on a scavenger hunt. This is one of the places you had to go were these announcements. So... Please, uh, well, hey, please have this horrible. Okay. I, I, I don't think they're two minutes slower. And maybe that's possible, um, I'm not using either right now. I'm not on AT&T. So, it's working fine on mine. I think I think my family has charter or we did. Unless we changed it. We had charter and I'm getting fine latency. So that that's theoretically a risk. I don't know that that's currently a problem. Anyway, stay on topic here. Um so if syllabus and announcements. This is a content module. There's only two things on it. One is the syllabus the other are the announcements. So if you ever have a question, don't want to watch the video or whatever, they're right here. They haven't moved. I haven't moved them all semester. They've been here. Okay, so we talked a lot about announcements last time. We don't need to do it again. Uh, most stuff is the same. Uh, so, you know, reminders, Monday is your last day for the, for the climate study. Um, I've put MindTap access instructions back to D2L. They did actually re. They did a big maintenance thing. I think it was this morning between four and eight a.m. Um, Eastern. So whatever, it's over now. Um, where they totally changed their system. So if you had trouble registering and you haven't gotten access to MindTap, uh, let me know. Um, I may have missed a couple emails from Monday. I need to go back and look. Um, I know I saw a couple um, when I before went to bed last night. I answered a bunch from yesterday, but I didn't get to everybody from Monday. So. Um, <laughs> yeah they're here you know i try but i understand that if you don't know like if you don't think to look for something you won't like guess where it is there's it's amazing like the power of expectations to shape your reality um so i, I try not to be critical um i try to say it over and over and over again um i do lose patience occasionally but i understand that it's it's difficult like i think back to how I want things to be like based on my experience all the times I've spent in classes and academics, you know, because I was a student for uh, what, eight, I guess eight years in college and grad school. So I've taken a bunch of classes. I have over 160 hours of coursework. Um, and then I'm a teacher. So like, I've been teaching classes for years now for five years teaching classes. Uh, so I have a lot of experiences about how classes should work. 
you guys don't. You you know, you're probably at most in your if you, if you like break the year. So of course with NEIU students there's a lot of like non-traditional timelines. So if I say like fifth semester, sixth semester, I mean like relative to the eight semester like plan, which I recognize doesn't really apply to most really to most NEIU students. You know I think that's a valid approach, but I don't think it's a helpful approach to say that students just have excuses. Sure, you can you can take that approach to a lot of life, but I think there's, I try to take a more proactive approach than just to be like, yeah, no excuses. I try to have that no regrets approach. Regrets, was spelled with an A, by the way. That's a really weird movie, but it's funny if you haven't seen it. Um, meet, meet the Fockers, I think. Yeah. It's, it's pretty funny, but it's a little weird. There's a character who has no regrets tattooed on his, like his uh, clavicle. But it's spelled wrong. Weren't I having trouble? We're the Millers. That's the one. Having trouble a couple streams ago with what? Do I experience difficulties? Of course. Oh, oh, okay. I was going to say, like, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> I have trouble every day, so it's of course uh, unfortunately not specific enough. You'll have to refine your statement. I have been listening to that audiobook too much because that was a reasonable impersonation of my narrator. Okay, moving on. Point of all that is that mind tap instructions um, should be easier to follow. They've upgraded their system, and as best I can tell, they've synchronized a lot of systems. So if yours wasn't working before, it probably can be done now. So as of like 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock this morning, the system's been rebuilt. You should re try again if you haven't got it access already. Let me know so I can move your um, mind tap deadlines. Because here, the, ooh, oh, geez. Oh, geez. Oh, geez. Oh, goodness. Wow, that's wacky. <clears throat> Okay, summary of upcoming assignments. So there's a little bit more explanation on April 20th. Monday is announcements, two slides back. Normally they'd be consecutive slides, but because I had this thing here, there's another slide back that has all the stuff. Which, by the way, if you don't know, that all the announcements for the whole semester are on here. They're all stacked up, which mostly you don't need to see too far back. But you can go back a day or two if something's not clear and see if it's explained better. Um, mind tap assignments coming up. Um, Midnight, it's always midnight in the day that I post, at least for these few assignments. There have been exceptions, but for these, it's midnight of the day I post. Chapter 7, today at midnight. Chapter 8, Sunday at midnight. And Chapter 9, due Tuesday at midnight. It's Wednesday now, so I'm talking about this upcoming Tuesday, which is Tuesday the 28th. The following Tuesday, grades are due, so obviously it's not going to be then. All right, everybody, calm down. Everybody chill. We're all friends here. We're partners in learning. I hate this mic stand. That's why I was feeling with it. Everybody be happy. Don't worry. Be happy. Okay. Chapter 9. Oh, the other thing I need to say is the interpreting the results portion. Got, I will mute you. In fact, I'm doing it. All right, you're both getting timed out. You can talk again in 10 minutes. Chill out. So, uh, this is a power I have not had to exercise yet. I don't want to exercise it. I have deleted your messages, and you guys are uh, not allowed to post for 10 minutes. All right? This is a place of fine. The fun times. I don't mind having a discussion. That wasn't that wasn't a friendly discourse. Okay. Look, it's not a power move. It it's a we got stuff to do today move. Okay. And look, I'm all for discussion. I like arguing with people. Um, but there's an there has to be an expectation of civility, and I wasn't feeling it there. And text is really hard anyway. 
No, not permanent. Apparently, Twitch has gotten really crazy about bans, uh, and it like goes on your like account record forever. It's kind of a big deal now. It used to be like a meme. Apparently, it's news to me. I, I don't know. I'm not really a Twitch user, but my, one of my friends who's been helping me with my Twitch channel told me that he they used to, uh, they used to like meme ban people and then just unban them. And apparently, that's really bad now. So I'm not gonna not gonna do that. Okay, anyway, chapter 9, interpreting the results uh, portion is entirely on the, the end of the chapter we're skipping, which has to do with the proportions, and I kind of thought that I might leave it in anyway, but I decided against it. So, um, I, thought, I thought you probably could have handled it, the, you could have substituted an X bar, and it would have been fine, but I thought it was incongruous with the fact that we're skipping the proportions, so it's just one fewer thing to worry about. So, chapter 9 homework... Um, uh, it is going to be only one part. It's not going to be two part. Uh, I haven't noticed any dips in my stream quality, Miriam. It looks okay for me. I've got a green a green arrow. Unfortunately, it's about 25 inches to the right compared to this. Um, so it, it may be a Twitch a Twitch server issue. Um, I, I don't know. Oh yes, pollen chunk. Um, I, 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 I don't know if it's specifically yours. Um, the good, so again, you know, these announcements are on D2L. You can always come back and if you miss something, you'll find it on the video later. I do have them. I upload them right after class almost every time. I try to do it every time. I forgot once. Um, so you can always go back and check something. Uh, okay. That's chapter nine. That's due Tuesday. But don't worry about that only being one portion. We're going to do a chapter 9 vocab quiz here in a few minutes. In class assignment 2, which is going to be chapter 7 and 8, um, because we won't have done chapter 9 yet. We'll be about halfway done today. Um, chapter uh, six, and, sorry, chapter 7 and 8 in class assignment will be available this weekend, so I'm going to have it posted on Friday. Um, I'm hoping it'll be available at midnight, on like Thursday night into Friday, um, and it'll be due Sunday at midnight. Um, that can be com com completed in groups, just like it would have been an in-class assignment. Obviously, those are remote groups. I felt obligated morally to put remotely in parentheses here. So, you know, don't actually go to people's houses and work on it. Get on Zoom or Discord. Um, which, that's an interesting thought. I hadn't considered that. Uh, I, so anyone has access to the voice call channel, I could set up meeting rooms in the Discord. I'm going to do that. Okay. Got on my to-do list. <laughs> okay. Networking. Getting done. Let's see. That is in class assignment two. That'll be available over the weekend. Um, so, you know, your homework is not due until Sunday, but, you know, you can do whatever you want to do on that for, for pacing your own, for pacing yourself. We'll do quiz two, open book, open notes as usual in class on Monday, covering chapters seven and eight. Um, and like I told you before, my plan is to take a question or two from the in class assignment. So you've seen it before. It'll be in the same format. So you should, you should, be able to handle the, the questions easily. Of course, I'll change the numbers so you can't just write down the answers of the in-class assignment. And um, if you just go with a big group of 10 people because you found them on Twitch uh, and then someone solves the problems for you and you didn't learn anything, you're going to get burned in the quiz. So there's kind of the caveat. Make sure you actually understand it. In class assignment three, which was that completion grade. Oh, I lost the parentheses somewhere. Uh, that was supposed to be parentheses here. Um, uh, it will be under quizzes. It'll be under quizzes. That's a good question. Let me, um, let me, let me, let me actually make a note about that. So, Okay. Um, okay, I've made an edit. It'll push to the server. I'm not going to bother to re-download the slides. Um, it'll change. So it'll, it'll now say, in class assignment two, 
quizzes, under quizzes. Same thing will be true on our end class assignment three. I didn't add a separate note there. It's same thing. Um, this is a completion grade. That's the exit survey. I talked about it at length last time. Won't do that today. If you really want to hear my, my voice on the subject, you can go back and look at the announcements on Monday. Knock yourself out. That will be available finals week. Um, now, I'm not going to make you work on the weekend, and I want to have everything turned in by then, um, mostly. So those surveys will be available between Tuesday the 28th and Friday, May 1st. So you'll have four days to get that filled out. Your end of semester evaluations are, of course, due on the 27th. Uh, if you get to 80% as a class, I'll drop your lowest quiz, um, which makes quiz three optional, although I strongly recommend that you fill it out. Under normal circumstances, I would make you do it um, and then tell you afterwards if you made the 80%, but I won't do that to you this time. Uh, okay, so your quiz three, your, your dates that are coming up, um, quiz three is going to be Tuesday and Wednesday. Exam three will be Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and the final exam will be available Thursday, Friday, Saturday. If that's totally infeasible for you, let me know. Um, so I'm decided to try something that I've considered before. Um, it, it, it puts some, it largely puts more work on me on the short term, and it in some ways is less flexibility for you. But it, it's we're gonna we're gonna try this. So it's simplified format for um, for the exams. Um, and the quiz as well. We'll do it for the quiz. So all three of these assignments have the same format. You have those range, those date ranges, quiz two days for the quiz, three days for both exams. You have any time you want. Any, you can take an attempt any time within that interval. However, the attempts are timed. There's a time limit. Um, I haven't decided what it is, but that's, there is going to be a time limit. Um, and you have three attempts. You can try three goes at um, each of the assignments. But once an assignment is started, the timer starts, you can get up and walk away if you want, but it will, um, I'm gonna hide my face because it's blocking the um, slide. Um, actually, wait, what if I put it top right? Cool, and then I hide the Discord chat. Why not? Um, the, uh, okay, there we go. So three attempts. Best one counts. Obviously, I hope that's the third one, but you have to do the whole thing is one attempt. Um, you'll get a practice exam for exam three. I should have that for you over the weekend, um, but I'll, I won't have it posted until I get you know the quizzes and then class assignments and stuff built and put on there. So like, I'll get it to you after that. Um, but that'll be for exam three. The final exam is just a recombine of the first three exams. So just use the three practice exams for the individual exams. Um, and it'll be content will be the same for all three exams. Just put together. Um, so again, three attempts, best one counts. Each attempt is timed. And so when you say start exam, there's no like pausing it and coming back later. You have to keep going. Um, and if you keep going after the time limit, it'll shut you out and you can't make any changes. Um, you don't get a zero. It's just like you're done. You can't do anything else. Um, so it'll be totally up to you. Take it when you want, but you got to do the whole exam or the whole quiz in one sitting, uh, and you get three tries at it, um, whatever you want. So it's a little more work for me um, because I have to make more versions of the exam, um, which unfortunately for a lot of stuff in this class, I have to do manually. It, the formula stuff doesn't work very well. Um, I think it'll be okay for this one, for this exam, but it kind of was kind of a pain on the previous one. But that's okay. Like I said, I think it's, I think it's better for this exam. I can kind of get over it in some ways. Okay, so lots and lots and lots we went over. I know we got a lot going on, but you know, well, as we, as we knock things out over the weekend, our announcements on the Monday will be shorter, but that's going to be it. Monday is the last day. Last one. Why don't we celebrate with a last quiz? Uh, I forgot to set the time limit. Time limit. Available, please. I'm checking the box. Okay, mouse accuracy. Get good scrub. It is 12. You have until 12:15. Begin. As usual, I'll go off mic. I'll mute the dinging in the chat. But I'm here. If you need to ask me any questions, um, <laughs> it's okay, everybody. Everybody be cool. Everybody be happy.
it's it's tough times in life right now. I get that. Well, I've been telling people, I've had some people who get upset with me the last few days. Um, blame me for various things, which, you know, some of it's true. But let's try to work together instead of against each other. Let's work together against the problem. This is a little life tip someone told me, and I'm repeating it for you. When you get upset, especially like your partner, you know, your, your girlfriend, your wife, your husband, your, I don't care, whatever, your goldfish, whatever. Be a little weird relationship, 41-sided, but, you know, whatever. When you get upset, remember, it's you two against the problem, not you two against each other. You two against the problem. So, remember that in your interpersonal rea- and relationships, I think it's valuable. So, that's especially true right now. So, have at it. Good luck on your vocab quiz. I'm here. Going to go off mic. Turn off, I'll turn off the dinging. See you in 15.
I'm sorry to interrupt you guys, folks. I just got two notifications on my phone, and they popped up over my Twitch overlay. I, either my chat isn't updating, or it didn't go to my chat, and I don't see the messages in Discord, or I don't even know if I have Twitch DMs. I don't, I'm not a Twitch professional. I had a lot of help setting up the sesh, setting up the channel, whatever. So, if you're one of the couple people, Annie and Bart, who sent me a message a moment ago, where did you send it to me? Because I am not finding it. How I thought, but. Yikes. <laughs> no, that's fine. Maybe it's just not on the... Maybe I just can't find it on mobile. Maybe it's just me. User error. Oh, yeah, it's easy to find on um, desktop. Okay, no problem. Okay, we've got a couple minutes, folks. I'll be finishing up if you haven't done it already. Thank you. 
Okay, that should be everybody. It's been 15, 16 minutes. Yes, I have 34 submissions. Excellent. Okay. Um, I'm going to put my Twitch DMs away, so um, for those conversations, you can ask me either after class or something, so we can um, move on as a group. Uh, a couple questions in the chat uh, during the cl during the quiz. If you weren't looking, I've got sounds turned back on. Um, grades are due, I believe they're due Monday the th uh, Tuesday the 5th at midnight. Um, so I have to have everything in, submitted, final grades by then. Um, that's why nothing. I'm having everything due by Saturday, so I have two days to polish anything that needs to be done. Um, I, there will be some things I have to do manually. I try as much as I can to have things done automatically by D2L, if for no other reason than to help minimize my own mistakes. Um, um, on top of that, uh, so for example, like I still haven't put in, I've not dropped that question from midterm, I mean from um, exam two, um, because I've been grading the midterms and doing other things like that. So for my other class, um, I thought, they were further behind than you guys are. So um, I have graded all but one thing for them. So now I'm going to focus on you guys for the next little, little while. Um, and I'll try to have, um, my goal is to have all of the different uh, grades put in by the end of this weekend. But that would be like, you know, Monday. And that, that may be over ambitious. I'm not sure. Um, it, it may very well be, you know, Wednesday. So it may be that I don't have all the grades put in until, um, you know, Wednesday or Thursday. Um, it's just going to be, there's a lot for me to do in the next few days. So, you know, if you look at this to-do list on the announcements and you think, uh, oh, wait, I had to close it. If you look at this, if you look at the to-do list on the announcements and you think, wow, that's a lot, it's a lot for me too. It's a lot. I have to build all of those things, you know, build all the surveys and build all the whatever. So it's a lot. So please be patient with me. Um, you know, for with the exception of, the quiz one and the in-class assignment one. You have all the grades in some place or other. Um, you know, if you have, if you did the resume stuff, then you know those are dropped homeworks and you can kind of, you know, you can do the math yourself a little bit. Um, I will get to it. I just have a lot to do right now. So I apologize. Okay. So we have 30 minutes. Let's talk about Am I not hitting content? Am I just... Okay. So I have a... One of the things... I spend my whole day on a computer pretty much. So I have... Uh, I tend to get wrist pain. So I've started using a low friction mouse pad. Which I'm a huge fan, by the way. So it's a hard mouse pad made by Logitech. Um, I really like it. Very low friction. Um, but the downside of it is that even just the force of clicking the mouse can can move it. So like this is it is incredible, and I have my sensitivity set really really high, um, so I don't have to move my hand as much. Um, so uh, I'm just using my pinky. I can, and my my wrist is on the on the desk, and I can absolutely whip this thing around with my pinky. It's uh, yeah, I think it does. Yeah, I really like it. Um, basically, yeah, I have, like, I'm trying to avoid carpal tunnel set in. Um, so I have a, a mouse. I have a, an unnecessarily expensive mouse. I don't play like wow or anything. I don't need all these buttons. Although I found that there are professional applications for them. So I have it bound to like, I can change the tab on the browser with side buttons. I can go forward and back. Sure. Um, I don't have the, so like, for example, I think it, let's see if it's working. I can change the tabs and I can like refresh the page and there's cool things you can set up, but the more important is that it's ergonomic. It fits my hand. Everything makes it better, except that sometimes it makes it hard to click. So, you know, pros and cons. I say unnecessarily expensive. It's like 50 bucks for the mouse. Yeah, no, I know. Yeah, that's exactly what it's like. It's equivalent to that. Um, and I have played WoW. I played WoW a few years ago. Um, so one of my friends is a huge fan. Um, for lots of like social reasons and stuff that I don't really buy into. But it, it's meaningful to him. So whatever, it's fine. Um, so I, I played with him and eh, it was, it was alright. I quit, so that tells you anything.
it really is a professional thing for me. Like I, I actually, my, my, the mouse that I brought to campus, I have a backup mouse. It died. And I have actually uh, put in a, a requisition for, to have one of these for my office on campus, but they're sold out right now. So um, you can't get them. They're pretty hard to find. Okay. So let's talk about hypothesis testing. So uh, this is such an interesting field. Um, and so basically what we're going to be doing is we are going to be asking the question, do we have enough evidence based on the data we have, available, we have access to? Do we have enough evidence to reject the status quo? Do we have enough evidence to show that what was previously believed to be the case is wrong? So I like to think of this as um, like Sherlock Holmes, actually. In fact, there's a particular quote um, that I think is uh, somewhat applicable. I was thinking about it earlier, and I think it might actually be misleading. Um, so I'm going to refrain from using it because it means something to me, and I'm worried that it will mean something different to you. Um, it's sort of like the uh, it's sort of like looking at it from the other angle, and that might be confusing. Um, so basically, what we're going to try to do is use statistical tools to use the concepts we've discussed, chapters six, seven, and eight, to provide a statement, quite literally, a statement about um, how likely a uh, the, the the I call it the status quo. It's it's uh, there's a fancy name for it um, that we use in statistics, um, but we haven't talked about it yet, and that is the null hypothesis. Um, so you know you've you've had it in your vocab quiz, so hopefully you you're ready for that. Um, but the the idea is that there is some status quo, something that is um, believed to be true, and we're trying to show that it's not that it's not it's not true, um, and we have to have enough evidence for that. So that's where we're going to start. We're going to start, um, sorry, I should say, be more clear. The statements that we're going to be testing are where we're going to start. Because without those statements, we can't hope to test them, right? You, know, you have to know what you're testing first. Um, we'll talk briefly about type 1 and type 2 errors. Uh, I don't want to spend a lot of time on this. Um, and then we'll get into our two cases of interest. So what do we do if we know the population standard deviation? And then what adjustments do we have to make if we don't? And then obviously we're going to skip population proportions. So like I said, this whole idea of testing some statement about, and this is specifically, this is specifically about uh, population parameters. Um, so is this statement about the parameter true? Um, does it seem to be true or does it seem to be untrue? Um, we can never prove anything because our samples could always be misleading. That's always a possibility. Um, but we can, we can provide evidence for or against. So we have two things, the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis. Um, the null hypothesis is denoted H null, H not, H zero, as you're probably more comfortable calling it. Um, null is, 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 is a, is a more common term in other fields, um, so it's it's commonly used in statistics as well. Null hypothesis, written H0, is a tentative assumption about a population parameter. So, you know, this could be like a published statistic, or it could be like your, uh, you know, the company has claimed that, that's your null hypothesis. Um, and then you have the alternative hypothesis, denoted H sub A. This is the opposite of what is stated in the null hypothesis. Now, sometimes the null, the alternative hypothesis is what your company is claiming, like, this is a new drug that can improve your heart. And so that's your, your hypothesis that the new drug is better. Uh, and so then, you know, the null hypothesis is that it doesn't. It doesn't make a difference. So the whole process here, define our two hypotheses, null and alternative, and then use data from a sample to test the two competing statements. Now keep in mind, these are opposites. They're two sides of the same coin. It's either one or the other. It must be one of the two. It cannot be both and it cannot be neither. It must be exactly one of the two statements. So we will use data to determine which one seems to be more likely. Uh, well, let me rephrase that. That's true, but that's not really the point. Um, 
generally we're going to need more than a 50% cutoff. More than more likely, usually the null hypothesis is assumed to be true unless there's a whole lot of evidence against it. Wow. There's a really beautiful cardinal right outside my window. Oh, come back. Okay, it's behind the wall now. Can't see it. But like six feet away. Super, super close. Gorgeous. I wish you could have seen it. It's still... No, it's gone. I don't know where it is. Okay. Null and alternative hypotheses. Here's, here's the thing, though. It's not obvious. This is, as we say... Oops. This is, as we say, more of an art. Maybe. So you got to be careful. Context is important. Sometimes you start with the null hypothesis. Sometimes you start with the alternative. Long, long and short of it is, doing doing this well takes practice. In fact, the homework that I signed on MindTap is like sixty percent hypothesis definitions. Um, I think every question. I keep, uh, am I wrong? Okay, I could be making this up entirely. I think every question has hypothesis formulation in it. Um, all of them do. And then some, I, there may be, no, I think that's not, I think it's all like 50-50. Make the hypothesis and then test the hypothesis. Okay, so we have, I think, three different strategies that we're going to discuss in class today about how to, de how to develop these uh, hypotheses. So basically, um, you're going to need a starting point and then, so for any of the strategies, we're going to find a starting point, and then the other hypothesis, whether we start with null or, or alternative, whichever one we don't define first, we'll define second, and of course, and then whatever isn't the first is the second. So when you, whatever, whatever isn't within the realm of possibility for the first must be the second. So everything that's not this is this, and vice versa. Okay, so sometimes what we're going to be doing uh, many applications involving oh, this is really annoying. This I'm gonna turn this off. I don't like that. Okay, uh, many applications involve testing um, a research hypothesis, meaning the world exists as it exists, and we have a, a new claim that we are attempting to demonstrate. So, in this case, it's easier to start with your alternative hypothesis, which is basically the thing you're trying to show. You know, this is what you're going to put on the commercial, right? You know, um, ask your doctor about this commercial today to see if it can help you with your hypertension, with your thyroid problem, with whatever, right? Does your drug actually make a difference compared to the previous? Or um, do people actually prefer your laundry detergent? in a blind test, you know, these kinds of statements that we're going to need to show. So uh, we will use the, uh, that as the alternative hypothesis, and then the null hypothesis is just, you know, no, it's not better. Um, so then what we're going to do is we try to see, do we have enough evidence to show that the null hypothesis is unlikely? Can we reject the null hypothesis because it's very unlikely to be true. Um, so it's weird. Like if you, you're trying to show that your new thing is better, out with the old, in with the new. So what you do is you show that it's not, not better. We can't prove that it's better, but we show that it's really unlikely to not be better. That's what we can show. And that's kind of what makes this whole thing so difficult, is that, in, that, that double negative. We're trying to show that it's not not better. Therefore, it's better. <laughs> so just, you know, let that, let that sink in for a second. We're trying to show that it's not not better. That's the goal. Okay, example. A new teaching method is developed that is believed to be better than the current method. Let's say everyone's using Zoom, and this, you know, s this uh, this whippersnapper, young whippersnapper, comes in and he says, "We're going to use Twitch and Discord instead." Hypothesis: a new, This new teaching method, Twitch and Discord, is better than the current method. Okay, let's start with our alternative hypothesis. Well, here's this keyword 
believed. I believe it's better than the current method. Okay? Alternative hypothesis. The new method's better. As I think it is. As I believe that it is. As my, as my judgment uh, determines that it is. So, if it is better, it's better. But what if it isn't better? What is the alternative to the alternative hypothesis? What is the leftover in reality? It is that it is not better. It is no better than the old method. Now, be careful here. It's tempting to say, oh, if it's not better, then it's worse. Well, there's always the possibility that it's the same. It could be the same or it could be worse. We don't know which one. We just say it's not better. It's no better than the old method. Okay, so I believe it's new. I'm sorry, it's new. I believe it's better, um, but it might not be. It might, it might not be better. Example two. A new Salesforce bonus plan is developed in an in attempt to increase sales. Okay, so what am I trying to demonstrate? Well, I'm trying to demonstrate that the new bonus plan will increase sales. Right? I believe in an attempt. There's another key word, right? Look at this verb. Whoops. Look at this verb. Attempt. Okay, so what am I trying to do? Increase sales. No, exam three is not optional. The final exam is optional. Well, I actually have had students that didn't take exam three and took the final exam, but then the final exam was very much required for them. So, I strongly encourage you to take exam three. <laughs> but, you know, live your life. Do what you want. I can't make you do anything. There's just consequences. And just look at your username. Naruto gets... Naruto. I'm trying to figure out what that means. I've seen... I haven't seen Boruto, but I've seen... And I skipped all the filler because... Oh, yeah. Final. Important distinction. <laughs> yeah, final is optional. Um, and remind me after at the end of class. We'll check the. Um, we'll see how many people have filled out the survey so far. Get a number on it. Okay, so I believe I've made an attempt to increase sales. So that means this. So increase sales is our goal. So increase sales is the thing. This increases sales. Or if that's not the case, uh, oh geez, oh oh geez, oh geez, Rick. Okay. Or, so yes, it increases sales, or it does not. So it does, or it does not. There is no try. Right, Yoda? Do or do not. Increase or do not. So Yoda would be really good at these hypotheses, because it's one thing or it's the other. There's no try. It does or it doesn't. And we'll have to see what we have evidence for. Okay, one more example, right? Yes. Okay. The example I've been using, a new drug is developed with the goal, keyword here, goal of lowering blood pressure more than the existing drug. Okay. This is a long statement here. Blah, blah. Okay. Well, does it, does it lower blood pressure more than the existing drug or does it not? Can you sail under the command of a pirate or can you not? So, hopefully you're getting the idea. Research hypothesis is the alternative hypothesis. Yes, it's better. And then the null is, no, it's not better. Or no, it's not worse, or whatever. Okay. Now, that's option one. Option two. Null hypothesis as an assumption to be challenged. So, this is something like some agency, some organization, some company, some group has a statement. Um, and whether it's like historical or wherever it comes from, there's something, and then we are trying to challenge that. So we're going to begin with a, with a belief or assumption that we think is true, and then we'll try and show it's wrong. So we're going to start with the null hypothesis, right? So the null hypothesis basically already exists, and we're just trying to challenge it. So number one, let's say that the label on a soft drink bottle states that it contains 67.6 .6 fluid ounces, which I think is like a liter. 
if I'm not mistaken. That's a two liter. That's a two liter. Yeah, that's a two liter. Because uh, 100 and, yeah, 128 ounces is a gallon. 3.8 out 3.8 liters to a gallon. So yeah, two liter. Okay. Two liter. A two liter believes that it contains 67.6 fluid ounces. Okay. Uh, null hypothesis. That's true. It contains 67.6 ounces. But wait! Huh. Now, this is where it gets tricky. Why don't I have an equal sign? Why do I have greater than? Well, from a consumer's perspective, if your bottle has more fluid than you're promised, that's a good thing. You're going to be happy that you've received extra soda. Extra pop. But, now maybe if you're cooking or something and you add a bottle and it's too much, you'd be upset. But generally, you know, more is better. So really the label has promised 67.6 ounces. Now, from a manufacturing standpoint, you don't want it to have any extra because you're giving away a product for free, but also you don't want to overfill the bottle. That can have its own problems um, in terms of like packaging dam getting the damaging the packaging and so on. So what symbol you put in this null hypothesis can be actually pretty tricky and even subjective. So that's kind of the hard thing. This is by far the hardest part of this por of this portion. In terms of the the bottle contains 67.6. You just copy and paste that in. That's pretty straightforward. It's the symbol that's the hard part. Is it equal to? Is it less than or equal to? Is it strictly less than? What is it? Very hard to say. Now, once we determine one of the symbols, the other must be the opposite. So in this case, mu greater than or equal to 67.6. So the alternative hypothesis is just whatever isn't that. Mu less than. 67.6 ounces, right? So if this is greater than or equal, this is less than. So you'll always have one that's greater than, one that's less than. You will always have this pair, and then somewhere one of them will have an equal sign. So that means it will be either this, Here are your two choices. And I've made an uh, ironically a really awkward looking face here. So you're either going to have this guy and this guy, or you're going to have this guy and this guy. You'll have these are pairs. These are your two choices. Option number one, option number two. Those are your options. You can get one of these two choices. You must have an equality. And. Uh, the equality, by the way, has to go in the null hypothesis. That's on a slide later. <laughs> what can I say? If I knew the slides better, I would know it was right then. Oh, well. I wanted it there, though. That's good. The equality part has to go in the null hypothesis. Um, just think about that. It should be. It should be just. It should be intuitive. You know, um, our new drug is as good as your previous one. Okay. I guess that's fine. But how are you going to prove that? Proving that it's exactly equal is basically impossible. This is going to be a continuous distribution, so proving equality is actually impossible. So the equality has to go in the part that we're challenging. It has to go in the null hypothesis because we cannot prove that it's equal. We can only prove that it's different or that it isn't different. We can't prove that it's the same. Or we can we can either prove that it's we can we can provide evidence that it's not not different. Or we don't provide evidence that it's not not different. We can't provide evidence that it's the same. We can't provide evidence that it's exactly the same. Okay. So I already described these two possibilities, which is to say, yeah, it's greater than 
or equal to and less than or, and less than, or it's less than or equal to or greater than, right? That's what I drew on the last slide. There's one more case. So these are the simpler options. These are called one-tailed test where I only care about one direction. However, sometimes you care if it's wrong on either end, and we call this a two-tailed test. And I was building our way there with our soft drink example, because think about it from the manufacturing standpoint. If you underfill the bottles, you run the risk of getting sued, which is obviously a problem. If you overfill the bottle, at least you're wasting money, you're wasting product, and, it, and you might even start having damaged shipments, which can cause you know explosions of pressurized bottles and potentially tight areas, could be deemed dangerous to individuals. Yeah, there's lots of problems here. So if it's either small or large, you're really in trouble. You don't want that to happen at all. So from a manufacturing standpoint, this question would be a two-tailed test. So that's what makes this all so challenging, is if you are evaluating the statement about the bottle's fluid content, you, which tests you would you would run, one-tailed this way, one-tailed that way, two-tailed maybe, depends on your perspective. Are you evaluating from a consumer standpoint or are you evaluating from a manufacturing standpoint? Because the answer changes. And that's what's so difficult about this is it's almost subjective, right? It depends entirely on your circumstances. So I will do my best to be clear about those um, on the exam. If it's not clear um, and you solve the problem with the assumption that's different from what I have chosen, I'm willing to argue with, let you argue your case uh, and regrade accordingly. I've done it before. Okay, last few minutes, let's do an example. Metro EMS, Emergency Medical Services. Okay, a major West Coast city provides one of the most comprehensive emergency medical services in the world. Operating in a multiple hospital system with approximately 20 mobile medical units, the service goal is to respond to medical emergencies with a mean time of 12 minutes or less. Okay. So if I look at this and I say, what's actually important? This is just, you know, it's not fluff, but this is going to provide the terms that we use to describe the question. 20 medical units. This doesn't even really hardly matter. That was a horrible line, but please let's ignore it. Okay, service goal, that's a key phrase. Okay, responding to medical emergencies. This matters because it tells me what I want it to be. Oh, it says it right here. I'm acting surprised like I don't already know. Mean time of 12 minutes or less. Okay, that's huge. Mean time, mean is mu, of 12 minutes or less. Okay, so I've got a hypothesis here. So the question is, is this our null hypothesis or is this the alternative hypothesis? So you can either, if you take one of two approaches, you can say, is this a research hypothesis? Are we trying to prove that it's 12 minutes or less? Or is this a, uh, is this a statement that is taken at face value unless it's proven otherwise? Um, so given that this is, this is an established process, um, we generally will take the established process at face value and try to prove otherwise. So that means that this is our null hypothesis. And because it's the null hypothesis, it has to have the equality. So because this is an existing system, it's the, it's the null hypothesis. And because it's the null hypothesis, we have the equality in the system. Which, and it's suggested by the wording here, right? Of 12 minutes. That sounds like an equality, right? Or less. So really, in this circumstances, it's pretty well spelled out for you. It's 12 minutes or less, equal to or less than. But that's kind of the process I would go through in general. Okay, so let's find out, basically... Is the service goal being achieved? That's the goal here. Okay. So, null hypothesis, as I already said, mu less than or equal to 12 minutes. If this is true, then, then the, we are meeting the response goal, meeting the goal, no follow-up action is necessary. This is an internal audit. We're just trying to make sure we're actually meeting our claim. 
However, if this isn't true, if not, make sure it doesn't say not. If not, then it's greater. So either it's equal to or less than, or it's more. Those are your only choices. It must be one of those two things. Okay, so either we can just demonstrate that it's less than, or we're going to be demonstrating that uh, there's significant evidence that it's more than, and we have to continue. Um, but that's uh, well, that's going to be the example that we use going forward. So that's the kind of thing that we're going to do, and we'll pick up here on Monday. So don't forget that we have a um, quiz on chapters seven and eight, which is going to be an excerpt from the in-class assignment that you work on over the weekend. Um, so it's going to be pretty short. Um, so come prepared for that, and we'll pick up here on Wednesday. So if you're watching on YouTube, that's all for today. Catch you in the next one.